What if you could learn from physical product entrepreneurs that have risen up from the trenches to dominating their market by creating successful physical product brands? Well, this podcast is hosted by me, Kunai Campbell, and it's about breaking the mold to becoming a smarter, savvier, and better product entrepreneur. You'll discover how to take physical products from concept through launch and to scaling up from physical product entrepreneurs who've taken their revolutionary ideas to 1 million, 10 million, and 50 million plus in revenue businesses. You'll also join me on my journey to build a million dollar physical product brand business in a year, where we both will learn about crowdfunding, selling to retail chains, launching through marketplaces like Amazon, strategic partnerships, publicity, celebrity endorsements, and selling direct to consumers. So if you're creating or building a brand in the consumer packaged goods space, in fashion and apparel, business products, or any physical product niche, listen in because we have you covered. Join the fast track to physical product business success. This is the Physical Product Business Podcast. I'm Kune Campbell. Let's get rolling. Hi guys, welcome to the 2X e-commerce podcast, the physical product business podcast. Um, today I have with me Kiri Masters. She is, it's quite an interesting background. I'll, I'll start out with, with what I know. She started out working for JP Morgan and then moved into Amazon. And having seen the power of Amazon, she decided to set up an Amazon marketing business specifically for brands called Bob Sled Marketing. She's a self-professed Amazon junkie. And I think without further ado, I'd like to welcome you, Kerry, to the show. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kunle. It's great to be here. Fantastic. Could you, where are you at the moment? I'm in Bangkok, Thailand. Oh, well, what, what are you doing? I'm here for a conference called the, the Dynamite Circle, oh, wow. which is a community of entrepreneurs who run online businesses. Okay, so physical product entrepreneurs, just like um, our, our listeners. Okay, could you take a minute or so to, 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 to let us, um, to introduce yourself, please, to, to the guest? Yeah, definitely. So my name's Kiri. I, um, I started on Amazon selling myself um, about Three years ago, and prior to that, I was I was in the in the banking industry. I actually started my e-commerce brand while I was still still had a day job, and it was kind of my creative escape. Oh. So I, I was I was my uh, first brand was in the crafts niche, mm-hmm. and so I was initially selling on my own website and Etsy, and creating all of these video tutorials. And I was very reluctant to get onto Amazon actually because I felt like it wasn't a great, it wasn't a place to grow a brand. Um, so it was only maybe a, a year or two into growing that business that I actually just decided to, to to throw a few listings up on Amazon and kind of see what happened. And the results were really great, even even back then without a lot of optimization. So I definitely became a convert to Amazon. And when I was looking to, when I was looking to leave my job in banking, I was looking at what kind of, what kind of skills I had acquired outside of the banking industry, and, and optimizing listings and account, and my own account on Amazon was was the first thing that came to mind. So I started, initially it was just freelancing, working for other brands, who needed help and they didn't really have the time or resources to to devote to Amazon. Okay. And over the uh, over the past that was 18 months ago and over the past 18 months we've grown um, Bobsled Marketing to a team of 14 people. Whoa. And about <laughs> and about a lot of them are part-time. Um, Still. but about <laughs> it's a lot of work coming in in 18 months. Yeah. Now. Yeah, so it's a lot of it's a lot of managing gotcha. um, and about 30 clients these wow. days. Wow. Wow. Okay. Let's talk yeah. about Okay, let, let's let's let's. So I, I want to find out about dates. So you, yeah. you you were working in J.P. Morgan how long ago, and when did you start? So selling on your website and Etsy and doing the, and then when did you move it to to Amazon? What what, what kind of dates do you? What timeline do you have there? Oh, you really uh really digging back in my memory. So I left I left my job eighteen months ago. I started. I like that lamp. My uh, e-commerce business in 2000 and it was mid 2013. Okay. 
Um, and then I started selling on Amazon, I guess it was probably around mid to late 2014. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 And, and just 18, 18 months ago, you, 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 you founded, you know, bobsled marketing and it's, it's grown phenomenally, you know, well, now let's yeah. talk about two things. Um, first you have a book. Um, one of the reasons yeah. we're here actually the Amazon expansion plan and you you specifically said that um, it's targeted to consumer product brand owners and e-commerce channel managers and um, the book covers or teaches how to boost revenues and sales on Amazon how to protect your brand on Amazon how to expand it's a it's targeted to a US audience mm -hmm. and how to expand from the US to the UK to the European markets and, and Canada, we, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then also how to optimize product listings efficiently. Um, right. So we'll talk about that. And um, I also want to, to kind of talk about the kinds of brand you, because we need to define what a brand, you know, um, means and a brand, yeah. you know, the context of a brand to, to people would, would be different. So from your perspective, um, you know, how would you define a brand? I think we should start out from the definition of a brand and then we go into the book. So, yeah, absolutely. So, well, I think that you can still, you can certainly still have a brand that exists only on Amazon. It's something that we would, we were talking about briefly before the call is mm -hmm. whether, whether having an Amazon only brand, um, is a great strategy anymore with a lot of the changes that Amazon is making. And I said at, at Bobsled Marketing, we certainly deal with established consumer brands who look at Amazon as another, as an additional sales channel rather than when where they first get started or it's their sole channel. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that to be, even though I am, as you, as you said, an Amazon junkie, mm -hmm. and I, I truly think it's a, it's an amazing platform to to sell products, I don't think it's a wise idea to have all of your eggs in one basket. And particularly now with all of the changes that Amazon has made, it means that if you have a brand outside of Amazon, that is, you're building a reputation, you have a, you have a presence elsewhere, consumers know about your brand from social media and mm. your website and other places, that's going to strengthen your sales on Amazon much more than if you relied on it as a single channel gotcha gotcha um yeah i absolutely agree with you um and i have a question um the question is you certainly have clients you have 30 clients and growing and um like me in consulting i have mm. some best in class clients some favorite clients not necessarily the way what they pay me but more the way they they operate right quite efficiently you know the way they relate the way the way they manage their accounts you know and the way they manage mm -hmm. their businesses so looking at your broad spectrum of clients and um, if you're to look at the best clients you're, you're, you're the top percentile um, how would you say they built their brand um, because they're, they're obviously right. with your help now on Amazon where did they start and how how's how they just moved into how they yeah where did they start how did they build their brand yeah, that's a that's a great question, and it really they really do kind of come from all directions. We work with some. Initially, we worked with a lot of um, crowdfunded brands, actually. So, mm -hmm. uh, so brands who'd raised some money on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, and mm -hmm. they uh, that was actually that's actually a really great platform mm -hmm. to validate a product idea, get your manufacturing costs covered and your initial marketing costs covered it's fantastic yes and yeah make sure that you have a, you've created a product that people actually want before you go out there and spend money on the exactly on the production that validation yeah yeah so <clears throat> worked with a lot of those kind of companies initially so so that was kind of one one um common background the other is a fairly traditional um uh like wholesale businesses who have a brand and they might even do their own manufacturing and they're selling to retail stores. Mm. So they're selling to grocery stores if they're in the grocery category or to Macy's or you know any of those big box stores. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then I guess the final category is the, is the 
the e-commerce native brands who mm-hmm. have they've really just started with a Shopify store and very savvy when it comes to things like Facebook ads and Instagram and they've really started from e-commerce but mm-hmm. not necessarily looking at marketplaces as, as well and that's when gotcha. they would engage gotcha yeah. and, and what kind of sort of expansion uh, what kind of sales growth do they typically expect versus get on Amazon mm-hmm. when they tap into Amazon from from wherever they come be it crowdfunding be it traditional e-commerce or be it you know typical wholesale with retail yeah. distribution in place how, yeah, well, how can I, Amazon sort of move, you know, just push the needle from a sales perspective for them for, right. for them to push more units? Um, or would it be relative um, to to the product type? Yeah, so I think that up, up until Amazon made all of those great changes to the review, the incentivized review yes. situation, which maybe, maybe we can talk a little bit about. Big um, elephants in the room. <laughs> I would, I, we, our standard sort of launch process, if, if a client came to us and they, were, they weren't on Amazon at all, they needed to launch from scratch, we would put a two-month timeline on that to um, add, add their products, do the copywriting and upload the listings, to get, get some reviews, to start running PPC it was all you know it was pretty finely tuned and we could we could as long as they got their inventory in on time we could definitely feel confident that by the end of two months they'd be generating organic sales and doing pretty well Mm. now the landscape's changed a little bit and I'm not sure it's it's definitely going to be more difficult for brands that don't have any presence on Amazon to get that initial foothold Mm -hmm. with reviews which help a lot with conversion rates I will say that I think um, Amazon has taken down a lot of incentivized reviews from competitors, so from from existing listings. So mm-hmm. it's it seems to be a, a more even playing field than I was actually expecting. I, I was expecting them to leave everything alone that was in the past. Because yes, yes. Those, those sellers, you know, to be fair, they were playing by the rules mm-hmm. of the time. That was just what. That was allowed at, at the time, and then Amazon changed but, it. But, but has it ha, have have the reviews been that significant? The reviews they've removed from from Amazon. I, I think what they did was they backtracked to perhaps like the last three months, and they mm. looked at um, the incentivized reviews in the last three months, and then they pretty much purged whatever they thought you know yeah was incentivized but if you know i had like a two-year head start yep. on on amazon and i had incentivized reviews right. over the last two years i still i still yeah. have that advantage so yeah i suppose my question is like in this post incentivized no post um no incentivized error on mm. on amazon is is the end of like the me too products you know, um, I'd say, yeah, error or, or glot over. Or um, yeah. do, do, do you think now's the time for creating really innovative products? You know, so th- is, is now the time for the Kickstarter or the crowdfunded entrepreneur? Mm. Yeah, I definitely think I definitely think the era of Me Too products are, is over. Wow. And selfishly, I'm, I'm kind of pleased because I, I went to go... I, need to, I needed to replace my Bluetooth keyboard the other day mm-hmm. and I went on Amazon and there was just just pages and pages of crap. Yes, indeed, yes. And I couldn't fit... As someone who is savvy with Amazon, right, I, I knew that what I was looking at was crap <laughs> and it was, it was so frustrating. It took me 45 minutes to figure out which keyboard to buy. Yeah. And I knew that all of the reviews were overinflated and I, I didn't know what I was looking at. So I was even thinking of going to, because I um, I live in the US, I was going to go to Best Buy or to Target to Whoa, get my okay. keyboard. So I, I understand why they did it. I understand that the from a consumer standpoint, it's also very, um, Amazon's, 
one of Amazon's key proposition has always been selection, right? Mm. They have the biggest selection available, 400 million SKUs, and that's not always a good thing. It's not a great thing when, when there's dozens and dozens and dozens of... It's a choice, a paradox of choice, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, pres- exactly. So uh, to, to kind of circle back to what we were talking about before, you have to, I think that the, the, those days are over. It's, it's, it's not a, there were very low barriers to entry before. Mm. And a lot of, a lot of people made quick money from, from launching Me Too products on Amazon. And there is, it's kind of, it's kind of true of any, um, uh, way to make money online. The door eventually kind of closes, shuts. Yeah, shuts down, yeah. Unless you're really serious about it and building a brand, building a brand outside of Amazon, le- certainly leveraging crowd crowdfunding platforms. I think that that's a terrific idea for, for bootstrapped companies. And not only it helps you validate the idea, it gives you initial funding. And then it also gives you a platform to promote your products on Amazon too. Yeah. So, so when we were working with Kickstarter companies, what we would do is um, the client, they, they would fulfill all of their pre-orders. And then when we when we launched the products on Amazon, they would actually reach out to their list on Kickstarter because you can, you can message those people and you have their email addresses to say, thanks for your support of our brand. We hope you're loving your new product. By the way, we're on Amazon now and... As you know, reviews are really important on Amazon. Would you write a review for this product that you have? Oh, well, you, okay. you have purchased to hand it. exactly, and they could take photographs right. of it anyway to for proof. That's right. So it won't be a verified purchase, but it's still a genuine review from a person who who has that product. So, right. Mm, that's okay. A, yeah. So, so I suppose from your perspective, um, it, it would still be business as usual for you. But you may be because you have three category of, of customers. You may be more selective with the wholesale. Um, well, the wholesale with, with the wholesale accounts you you, you take on board. Um, what is, has has have the changes on Amazon changed the way you you do business and um, well you onboard clients at Bobsled Marketing. Mm. Yeah, so I think that the the launch, certainly what we thought about in terms of a two month launch, that timeline needs to be extended out, and and uh, managing expectations about what's a realistic time frame to see some traction. Yeah. So without any reviews at all, um, then it does take you need those first few customers to really take a chance on you because. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no there's no validation yet, so I think that the overall time frame to 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 initiate product launches will take longer. Um, I am kind of interested to see if Amazon opens up the Vine program to mm. sellers as well, uh, or if they're just going to leave that closed. And uh, <clears throat> if they're not going to. Um, it, it does seem to one of my predictions for 2017, I guess, is that is that there's going to be um, sort of a movement for, for FBA sellers that are doing well onto the Vendor Express so, platform. Okay, could you tell us more about the Vendor Express platform, please? Sure. So with the most common way, certainly probably to your audience, about of selling on Amazon is through FBA. So you're, you're kind of selling on consignment with mm-hmm. Amazon. So you ship them your inventory and you get paid when or, when when orders are made for your product. Mm-hmm. So Amazon handles all of the logistics for you and that's one of the big benefits. They also have, Amazon also purchases inventory from vendors and it's administered through a different platform called Vendor Central or mm-hmm. Vendor Express. Okay. And so instead of Amazon paying you only when your products are sold, they buy an initial quantity up front through a purchase order. So maybe they buy a thousand of SKU A and they buy three thousand of SKU B. Mm-hmm. Gives and you then, upfront. When do you need to deliver immediately, or um, is is that do, do you do you deliver before they pay um, the purchase order? Right. Or? So, 
So they'll, depending on the terms of your agreement, they'll pay you 60 or 90 days after you have filled that purchase order. Oh, wow. So, okay. So there, there are lots of upfront costs required. So you need to be okay cash there, flow wise. Okay. There are, but I would also think of it this way, that if you're selling on FBA, you're also sending an inventory without it being paid for. True. Right. So with, with the vendor program, at least you're kind of guaranteed that you're going to get paid for all of that inventory, right? So the, 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 then Amazon will take, then it's actually shows as a product that's shipped from and sold by Amazon. So there's a potentially a bit more consumer trust there. Gotcha. And then you'd also, it, it's difficult to validate this, but it would also make logical sense that Amazon prioritizes their own products in the algorithm yes and they certainly do with the buy box so for you know pr protecting against hijackers and things like that mm -hmm. it can be helpful uh, you also get more um, customizable content on your page mm -hmm. so you can add videos you can create the a plus product pages which mm -hmm. have more visual content and tables and things like that so it all sounds pretty good the downsides are that um, or they also take care of all all customer messages, so you really don't have any any administration to do at oh, all. Wow. Okay, so so it's a hands free options. I suppose you cannot right. experiment with pricing. You uh, you know what you get is what you get in that purchase order. Yes, that's that's pretty much the the main downside is that Amazon chooses the uh, the the wholesale purchase price. And then they can price your products at whatever they want on Amazon okay. as well. Okay. So let's so, say you sell a product to them and the wholesale price is $15 and that's what they pay you. They could, in theory, list that product for $17. Yeah. And that's that's an, probably more so of an issue for larger brands that are selling to retail stores and they're worried about channel conflict. So, exactly. So they sell to Target and then Target says, well, Amazon can't list that product for seventeen dollars because we're selling it for twenty nine, mm. and it it hurts those relationships that you have with other right. retailers. Right, right. So that's one. That's a challenge about the vendor program as well as really just. I think it's worthwhile doing the math. Can you get is is the profit margin so much greater on using FBA that it just doesn't make any sense to do the vendor program and also considering the difference in the business model, you get paid in full for your inventory. You've got basically no other admin to do. Mm. So it's, uh, I suppose yeah. it would be the choice or the decision would be on a, um, well, on a case by case basis on your unique circumstances. If you, you kind of want to expand, you know, um, your product line or you want to expand to other channels, and it might make sense to just hand over all the hassle of managing an FBA account to, yep. to Amazon and, right. you know, getting on with expanding the business in itself. But, you know, right. that, that would, would as, a, as you expand, you, you, I suppose you, you'd, you'd expect to... Um, You'd, you'd expect to, 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 to have challenges like what you just said with regards to mm -hmm. channel conflicts. And um, I guess that's where you spend a lot of your, 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 your brain power. <laughs> so more or less, yeah. I'm trying to, to figure it out, which, yeah, I think it's good right. for the business. So I, I have two, two yeah. questions. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you're about to say something. I was just going to say, I think, you know, just to, about this concept of creating a brand and not just an Amazon business, because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have thought about their businesses from a from a private label standpoint. They've thought about, I have an Amazon business, but to think about having a brand. And the reality is that unless you're planning to do purely uh, consumer direct, so selling on your own website or selling on Amazon, and that's the only business model you're going to um, entertain, then you do have to look at wholesale, the whole your wholesale pricing, and make mm -hmm. sure that you have products that are still profitable when you sell on a wholesale basis. Otherwise, how can you grow your brand and be selling in retail stores? Absolutely. And as much as we love e-commerce, I forget exactly what the stat is, and I'm not sure what how it's different in the U.S. versus other countries, but I think. 
still only one in eight retail purchases is made online. Uh, that's that that that's yeah yeah it's 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 mind boggling it, you know giving you know we're in 2016 yeah uh, i think yeah, it will, I, it'll, it'll probably keep going down down for sure. yeah because but, yeah, yeah as amazon expands and the bigger stores you know um plan to expand you you've got the yep. the walmarts the targets you know also trying to to expand yeah. online i think there's a walmart Hello. I lost you for a second. Yeah, sorry. Yes, I, so I'm sorry. No, I think it's from from my my end actually. Okay. Um, oh, so, okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, so, with the Vendor Express, I suppose I've got two two kind of questions here. The first is has got to do with um, would you would it be better to which which comes first? Um, you start to you, you you go Vendor Express. And then you start to look for retail distribution, or should you have secured retail distribution? Understand, you know um, how channels work as a wholesaler, and then come mm. into Amazon um, as another channel. So you just sell, sell wholesale from a brand perspective that's been selling to say retail ch chains. It makes a lot of sense just giving it to mm. Amazon as a not treating Amazon as another retail chain basically, and letting them do the distribution. But um, right. obviously, the caveat is. Um, the 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 um, the loss of control you have on price, right? Which I believe is why um, LVMH and the luxury French brands do not want to you know ever yep. you know um, list on on Amazon, right? But um yeah, so so how would you sort of what would you advise to to listeners? Some some listeners have Amazon businesses and other listeners do not have Amazon businesses. They they're selling through other channels and. Which, from your opinion, would be more optimal, um, a more op optimal way to approach the, the Vendor Express, a Vendor Express strategy? Yeah, um, I'm, not sh I'm not sure that there is, there is a really strong an answer either way. I, I will say that from the retail consultants that I've spoken with, these guys who help brands to get into retail store, into big box retail stores, they certainly can confirm that the buyers at the retail uh, stores, the the uh, the merchants, they absolutely will look up your products on Amazon. And if you're not there, and if you don't have good kind of you don't have good reviews and metrics, and it doesn't look like an attractive product, then mm. they're not going to be interested. Mm. So I think that having an Amazon, having an it, it's kind of funny because really those those buyers are competing with Amazon ultimately, but they want it they use Amazon as a litmus test to make sure it's a good product. <laughs> okay. Um so I think that that's important. Whether or not you're using the, the vendor program is an interesting question. I I think I'm probably gonna agree with you that that if there's a chance that Amazon could be underpricing your products on the vendor program, then maybe mm -hmm. you'd want to wait until after you you've secured some retail distribution to do, to make that move because otherwise okay. they might be put off by a, a really low price on Amazon. Okay, okay. Makes makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, so, guys, if you're listening, go for your Amazon first. You know, um, it's yeah. just proof of concept, really. Um, social proof, too. Okay, the second question has got to do with, before we, we talk about the book, because we have to talk about this book, the, the Amazon Expansion Plan. Um, second question is the with the Amazon Express, <clears throat> how do you set up your clients on Amazon Express? How do you typically get your clients um, through through to Amazon Express? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, so there's two different vendor pro, um, platforms. One's called Vendor Central, which is invite only. You have to be sort of invited to that program by a, a, rep, a rep at Amazon. And then Vendor Express is one that you can just apply for. It's very simple you, you can even have a seller central account and a vendor express account that's totally fine and it can actually be a good strategic move to have both um so you have some products on fba and you have some on the vendor vendor program that can work pretty well 
Um, so the process of signing up for Vendor Express is, is really straightforward. It's, um, you know, it's just, there's just a questionnaire about your business and verifying your business number or EIN in the States. Um, and then the process of adding products is, is fairly streamlined. It's quite a different feel to sell a central because there is, there's less things to do. There's less levers that you can pull. You can't, you know, you're not messaging customers. There's no seller feedback to, to watch because it's Amazon. That's the seller, right? Um, so it's very it's very minimal and there's really not there's really not a whole lot to do in there. With pricing, um, how it works is you you list your products and if they're already on Amazon, Amazon will have a better idea of what they can price it at. Okay. Otherwise, if it's going to be a product like say, say like this journal here, mm. it's just a it's a nice cat's eyes like a moleskin or something. Yeah. Okay. Um. If I, if I put that up there, Amazon will actually use, it's kind of cool, it's just a computer algorithm that will take whatever keywords and what retail price you'd put into the form mm -hmm. and figure out what price they're willing to buy from you. Okay. Which okay. it's all machine-based, which yeah. can be kind of frustrating if they don't accept your wholesale, your ideal wholesale price. So, so you, suggest a, you, su you suggest a wholesale price and not a retail price? You suggest, <clears throat> but you, but, you suggest both. Okay. And then okay. Amazon will confirm, yes, okay, we, we will buy this product from you at $15 or no, we want to only buy it from you at 7 well, And if $7 is not going to be profitable for you, then there isn't anything you can do. There's no one to to take your case on, basically. Okay. So that's why I think it's it can be beneficial to have a a seller central account as well as a vendor express account okay. because there's some products which it's just not going to be profitable on vendor express and uh -huh. vice versa. It can, can work a lot better or very low priced items okay. on vendor express because you're not paying the FBA fulfillment fees. Plus I the see. I see because that, that's, yeah. that's part of the margin, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. True, true, true. And does Amazon actually cross reference um, the, the, the the seller central account um, for data when um, it's suggesting uh, an optimal hmm. price in, in, in vendor Good express question. I don't think so because when you're adding products the, the the calculation comes back so quickly about what they're willing to buy at it's sort like I said it's just it's mach a machine algorithm okay no idea how it works um <laughs> Yeah, it's, I'll, it's, I'll be sure. I'll it's be sure funny. to link link through that. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's um, very, very, very interesting insight. Um, okay, let's let's talk about the book. The book. The book is due to launch sometime in November 2016, the tenth, I believe. The tenth. Okay. Right. Could you give us a lowdown on on the book? Why did you write the book? Yeah, sure. So. Um, the Amazon expansion plan comes out on November 10th. It's going to be free for five days when it launches, so you can definitely okay. save save a few bucks and and make sure that you get it on or around that date. Um, so I wrote the book. It's kind of a it is kind of a lowdown of all of the things that we do at Bobsled Marketing. So for for some clients, they're brand new to Amazon. They want to understand which platform they should be selling on. So seller central, vendor, et cetera. Maybe they're on vendor and they're wondering if, if FBA is a better deal or vice versa. So it really kind of starts with the basics. And if you're, a, if you're an experienced seller on Amazon, you could probably skip through the first <clears throat> couple of chapters where we really get into optimizing products listings. Okay. So you know the, the key factors in... Amazon search algorithm, how to optimize for that. We get into PPC. Um, we talk about how to protect your brand on Amazon, the different mechanisms for that. Mm -hmm. And and then there there is a considerable piece of the content devoted to international product launches because okay. I I believe with Amazon there's there's a handful of ways to grow. You can you can optimize your existing assortment. Mm -hmm. You can continue adding to your assortment. Mm -hmm. You can launch in new markets. Mm -hmm. 
And then one that I, I think is, it's not very sexy, but it, it can have a huge impact on your sales, and that is inventory management and, mm. and projections. Okay. So I think w- inventory management and projections is, is quite technical. It's kind of hard to explain in a book format. I think it's probably better with sitting down with a spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> or, <laughs> but we or software. Do, do you recommend <laughs> any inventory management software? Yeah, actually, there's one that's pretty new called Forecastly. Forecastly, okay. I think I've heard yep. of it on, a, on another podcast. Yeah, so I've given that a trial, and that seems very good. And I know that they have put a lot of, um, you know, they have some data scientists working on their team, and their algorithms are very advanced around inventory projections so mm-hmm. I'd, i definitely recommend that tool I forecasting think okay yeah definitely link to it in the show notes okay all right sounds mm. sounds really 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 good okay so with regards to i have a question one of those my long-winded questions again say i was selling hypothetically 100 products on amazon usa a month yep. and i sort of put into action and international expansion marketplace um Mm. how much more would i sell in the uk europe and canada given 100 units as my baseline in the us that's a that's a really difficult question to answer i would be looking for I, i would be using tools like jungle scout or those other um sales estimation tools to be validating mm-hmm. that because um, I certainly know that Germany is the next biggest marketplace after the US for Amazon. Mm-hmm. So there's good volume there. There's good volume in the UK. But in terms of you know, like out of 10, if, if the US is 10, then what would what would Germany be, et cetera? I, cu- I couldn't put a number on that. I would say that it it's going to vary a lot by category and how competitive, you know, how saturated that niche is with competitors in each of those markets. Gotcha, gotcha. But in terms mm. of like market size, so so I'm just yeah. talking about like volume, search volume. Right. Um, yeah. So so I I have a, an Amazon USA store, and yeah. um, I live in the UK. And yes. The reason why is like you know it's obvious it's five to seven times bigger than right. um, the UK. So the ability to to scale. Yeah. Um, in my opi- in my opinion, um, is larger in the US. Same thing yeah. applies to music films. The moment sure. a, a star, you know, makes it in the US, they're they well, mm-hmm. they're, they're a lot more expected. So, so my, my 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 so I suppose what opportunities, um, percentage growth wise, should mm. sellers expect to see from expanding outside of the US to, to the right. UK, Europe and Canada? Could they 2X, could they, or, or 10X their business? Yeah, so I think that just Potentially. based on- Potentially, sorry. Yeah, just based on population, that that's certainly the case. But it's also very competitive in the US because this is where everyone starts selling, right? So those other European markets especially and, and Canada, I think the UK, the UK is kind of low-hanging fruit for US sellers, but they're all way less competitive than the US. No one's no one's pulling out these dirty tricks the same way that they do in the US. True. So that's another reason why I think it's it's difficult to quantify, like blanket across the board, how much of a of a lift you could expect to see, because in those in non-US markets, it's going to be less competitive. Mm. So even though the market size is smaller, it can be it can be easier to to enter and differentiate. So your conversion rates would be could be a lot higher as compared to your US right. same products in the US if you're selling in Germany, for instance. If you know, yeah, there's not much competition. Okay, that makes a lot yeah. of sense. Okay, 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 okay. Um, I suppose the other topic your book covered was protecting your brand on amazon mm. how, how how do you go about that sure so that the first step is really to recognize that amazon in the way that the marketplace has been set up um is essentially favors multiple sellers selling the same product mm. because if if selection is one of amazon's usps then Val- value 
value for money is another. So Amazon's um, philosophy is that if there's multiple sellers selling the same product, there's going to be competition and it's going to help to keep the price low and, and drive down the price ultimately. So you're never going to be able to get other sellers off your listings if they have acquired your products legally and they're genu genuine products so i think that this is less of an issue that the issue that um if like the private label sellers have is fairly simple to solve uh relative to bigger brands that sell in multiple channels mm -hmm. because with with private label label labelers um you essentially know that whoever is selling that product on amazon it's a fake like it can't be yours because it's exactly. your product and no one else has it. So in that instance, uh, our approach is to make a test buy, you know, buy buy that competitor's products, inspect it, and make sure it's you know that it is counterfeit, and then make a complaint to Amazon. And that's what they take seriously. Okay. If you're a bigger brand and you're selling to retail stores, you've basically got no control over who acquires your products and then sells them on Amazon. So it's, yes. it's actually a much bigger problem for, for big brands. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, is, is there any other topic your book covers well, you want to... Yeah, I guess the other part of protecting your brand is obviously enrolling in brand registry. That's gotcha. very... Yep very very simple to do it's kind of it that's just, it's just a, a step that everyone should take um do, and, do you need a website yeah. for for that um for for the right. brand registry you, yeah you do need it okay all right cool okay yeah so you need to have um i think that uh, and they it seems certainly over the period that we've been working with brands it seems to have become a little bit more strict so you can't just put up a the the quality of the website or how the logo is displayed on the product needs to be a little bit more sophisticated than it maybe once was. So brands might need to step it up a little bit in mm -hmm. that area where they yes. might have been able to get a, get away with less. But um, yeah, again, to to me, that's just kind of what you should what you should be thinking should, you about should do then. you should do it as a business really it's not right. not for amazon's sake but you should have something decent you know for, yeah. for a business okay yeah okay um i i suppose we, we should start wrapping things up um sure. i have a few few sort of questions i like to evergreen questions i like asking um um, guest on the show and uh, they're just like one-liner answers the expectation isn't you know necessarily a discussion so i'll just um i'll be ready when when you are um sure. okay let's let's go for it um first is what how do you hire people uh slowly <laughs> <laughs> good question i good use answer. a methodology called top grading top grading mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll research on that. Okay. Right. What are the three indispensable tools you use for managing your business, Bob, Bob Sledge Marketing? Google, uh, the Google Apps Suite. Okay. Um, Slack. Slack. Yep. And one more. What would that be? Mm, I would say, uh, I'm not sure. Your question was about managing the business, right? Yes, managing your business day to day. Yeah, I, I would say the, those, those two. two. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, if you could choose a single book or resource that has had the highest impact on how you view building a business and growth, what would it be? Mm, I would say the Napoleon Hill books. Mm, okay. And they're not all necessarily about business, but certainly about thinking about what your potential as a human being is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it all it's all starts from mindset, really. Okay. Mm -hmm. all right. It's yeah. We'll, we'll we'll wrap it up here. It's been an absolute absolute pleasure having you, Kerry, on the show. Thank you for Thanks sharing. Being here. Cheers. Thank you for sharing your insights on on Amazon. And guys, um, remember to to get the book, the Amazon Expansion Plan specifically for 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 building out your brand you know on amazon it's going to be free um for five days from the 10th of november this show should hopefully come online on youtube before that date so 
guys, you have no, no, no choice. <laughs> it's going to be a big one. I'm going to get it. I'm definitely going to get it, Kiri. So yeah, thank you. Great. Looking forward to reading it. Thank okay. you. It was great. Oh, it was great. Cheers. To I remember here. to leave a review on Amazon when, because um, yeah, you can leave reviews on, on free, you know, um, books and, oh, well, on, yeah, on, on Kindle books. On Is, is it just you Kindle can. or could you also do I that for normal books? Book. I think it's on books in general. And I okay. think that, what I what I heard was uh, Steve Jobs loved music, okay. and Jeff Bezos loves books. books. <laughs> so I'm not sure if it has anything to do with that. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Okay, Great. have have a good one. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Right. Same to bye you. Now. Bye bye See. now.